All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, what we're going to be doing now is looking at uh, Mendelian genetics and uh, odds making. Okay, so we'll consider this Mendel in Vegas. Now, uh, in discussing probability, uh, there is this probability scale. Now, uh, the scale has a range of zero, or uh, where you are uh, certain that event, an event will not occur. So certain it will not uh, occur. Uh, for instance, um, the odds that I will ever uh, cheer for the uh, New England Patriots. So that is at zero. Uh, let's see. On the other end of the scale is one. And at uh, one, an event is certain to occur. Uh, so, uh, we could say that is, um, uh, say for instance, it's your odds of uh, getting AP credit on the AP exam. So, again, um, the odds range from uh, 0 to 1, and uh, if you want to look at um, probabilities of different events occurring, uh, what you'll do um, is consider the fact that the probability, I'll use a lowercase p for probability, uh, the probability of all events, um, or I'm sorry, I should say all the possibilities for an event, let's phrase it that way, probability of all the uh, possibilities uh, for an event must equal 1. So think of, uh, you know, your classic uh, coin flip. Uh, or you know maybe even having uh, a baby of a certain sex. You know, your odds of having uh, a boy are one and two. Your odds of having a girl are one and two. So all the possibilities equal one. Now, uh, another important consideration when looking at probabilities is that the outcome of any particular event is unaffected. unaffected by previous outcomes. So just because you flipped uh, heads on one coin toss doesn't mean that it will necessarily uh, be tails uh, on the next coin toss. Now, what this does is allow us to do uh, some interesting uh, guesswork or predictions. So we can look at the probability of independent events like individual coin flips or separation of uh, homologous chromosomes. Um, the probability of independent events uh, occurring in specific combinations can actually be calculated. Uh, we do that by multiplying the uh, probability of the individual events. Oops, did I spell that correctly for you? All right, so um, we can uh, look at uh, an example of this. I'll just switch to white background here for now. Uh, let's see, let's look at the odds of having uh, parents heterozygous for three traits. So you do big A, little a, big B, little b, big C, little c, uh, mating with one another. So again, they're heterozygous uh, for each of three different uh, genes. So you want to know the odds that they'll have kids that are, let's say, heterozygous, I'm sorry, homozygous recessive. Let's look at that, homozygous recessive uh, for each of those genes. Now, uh, what we'll do is calculate these odds individually. Okay, so let's say the odds of this parent passing on uh, a little a, well, that's one and two. Odds of this parent passing on little a, again, it's, uh, oops, sorry, my, it's one and two. So when we multiply this together, uh, that creates the odds of one and four. 
All right, well, what are the odds that uh, the parent will pass on a little b? Again, one and two. This parent, a little b, one and two. Again, the overall odds, one and four. And then if we go with, uh, let's look at yellow here. If we go with uh, this parent passing on a little c, this parent passing on a little c, odds are one and four. So uh, if we were looking at this specific combination of events occurring, then what we'll do is multiply the probabilities of those individual events together. So when we do that, we wind up with a probability of one in 64. So if you have parents that are heterozygous for each of these three genes, the odds of them having an offspring that are recessive for all of those uh, can be calculated by multiplying together the individual probabilities uh, to get an overall probability of uh, one in four, okay? Uh, let's see, yeah, should be good.